While Kennywood does not have the largest or most diverse roller coaster collection, the eight coasters currently operating are major aspects towards the park's identity. Kennywood, once known as the coaster capital of the world, is one of the few places where you can ride a century-year-old coaster and then immediately ride a modern record-breaking coaster. Each one has a respective role in the park's collection. In this video, I will be ranking my personal favorite Kennywood roller coasters from worst to best. I will be including all eight coasters currently at the park. All the stats in this video come from the roller coaster database. This list is more difficult than my video ranking the park's flat rides. Since Kennywood's coasters are all good, there really isn't a bad one. With that out of the way, let's get on with the countdown. Number 8. Little Phantom Coming at the bottom of the list is obviously the park's kiddie coaster. Tucked away in the back corner of Kitty Land, Lil Phantom are many Pittsburghers first roller coaster, including myself. For what it is, it's a decent kiddie coaster with a fast lift hill and a couple of bunny hills that actually give a little bit of air time, but nothing too crazy for the younger riders. Plus, it goes around twice. This coaster is a good preview for what the kids will look forward to when they grow tall enough for the bigger rides. Number 7. Exterminator What is basically a cookie cutter coaster found at parks across the world, Kennywood went the extra mile to enclose a Crazy Mouse coaster and give it an immersive theme. Exterminator is considered by many to be one of the best spinning coasters out there, and I would have to agree. The theme is perfect for a ride like this, where riders take the role of a mutated rat being hunted down by the exterminators of Vermin Inc. in the sewers of Kennywood. Along the 1,378 feet of track, you take sharp turns and sudden drops common on other wild mouse coasters, but then halfway through, you get caught and spin uncontrollably in the darkness. Exterminator is quite small only standing just under 43 feet, and only reaching speeds of 29 miles an hour. But it is the compact layout and being in the dark that heightens the thrill factor tenfold. Even if you would remove the theming and place it outside, Exterminator runs excellently, with little to no trims and very fast spinning. This ride is great for what it is, but why is it so low on the list? It's mainly for personal preferences. I have to be in the mood to ride it, but that should not discourage you from riding it. Exterminator is a lot of people's favorite and is one of the most popular rides in the park, always getting long lines. Number 6. Racer Of the major roller coasters at Kennywood, Racer is definitely the mildest. But that doesn't mean it's a bad ride. Far from it. This is one of the most unique wooden coasters in the world being one of the last Mobius Racing wooden coasters. The total track length is 4,500 feet long, but you only ride half of it at a time. When you begin on the left, you end on the right, and vice versa. But the real reason to ride is the racing interaction, some of the best and most consistent racing on any coaster. After the first drop, you are parallel with the other train for the entire ride duration of a minute and 32 seconds. You are so close to the other side that it is easy to reach your hands out and slap hands with your opponents. The interactions on this ride are so much fun, and they make up for what is generally a mild wooden roller coaster. Racer is 72 and a half feet tall, making it the tallest wooden coaster structurally at Kennywood. You don't drop all the way, only about 50 feet. Actually, the first drop is built directly over the final drop. Racer is a standard double out and back layout, built on a gradual hillside. The layout focuses on turnarounds and hills reaching a top speed of 40 miles an hour. They are not really intense, but it doesn't need to be. Although I will say you do get some slight air going down the drops in the back seat, which is my preferred spot. And the final drop is definitely the best part. My only con I have with Racer are its PTC trains. 
Normally, I would never complain about buzz bars, and they don't affect the ride experience, but it slows down operations significantly, leading to longer lines than need to be. Also, the seats and seat dividers are over padded, making it a tight fit for larger riders. But that is just a nitpick. Racer is just good old fashioned fun, especially when riding against friends and family. But even if you ride alone, Racer is a very suitable classic. Number 5. Skyrocket. This may be the biggest surprise on the list. Skyrocket is often the most forgotten coaster at Kennywood despite it being the very first ride you come across in the park. I actually feel Skyrocket is pretty underrated and it has gotten better with age. Skyrocket is Kennywood's only launch coaster since Laser Loop and was the only looping coaster for 9 years until 2019. It launches riders 50 miles an hour using linear synchronous motors through a 95 foot tall top hat a 90 degree drop with a holding brake, sharp turns, and two inversions. Kennywood and Premier Rides claim the ride has three inversions, but that cutback is really an overbank turn. This 2100 foot long layout surprisingly packs a punch with some pretty great airtime, especially on that top hat, zero G roll, and the drop off the mid course. There is also good hang time on the corkscrew. And the only thing holding you in is a lap bar, although I will admit the shin guards can make it tight. I thought both the front and the back seats are good, and both provide different and unique airtime moments throughout the course. Unfortunately, most people don't think too much of Skyrocket, and that is mainly due to its underwhelming ending. Those surf curves and bunny hills don't do much but burn off speed. This ride was actually known to be closed for a while. That was to getting a new power generator. But whatever they did, I feel Skyrocket is running faster than ever. While some elements don't hit the mark, a majority of the ride is strong. Skyrocket was the first major addition Palace Entertainment added in the park. And while I don't think it was the major hit they were expecting, what we got is a fun supporting launch coaster that paved the way for the famous Skyrocket 2 model found around the world. Number 4. Jackrabbit Just coming off of its 100th season, Jackrabbit is the oldest coaster at Kennywood. Not only does it still give a solid ride, but it was also the second ever coaster to use under friction wheels, the first being Jackrabbit at Seabreeze. This allowed for coasters to perform more daring elements without flying off the track. Jackrabbit's 2,132 feet of track is a traditional out and back design with an untraditional setting down in a small natural ravine. You go down two drops and a tunnel before you even reach the lift hill, which is halfway through the ride. The tallest point is only 40 feet above the midway, but it has a 70 foot elevation change helping it reach its top speed of 45 miles an hour. The ride's signature moment, the double dip, is one of the greatest airtime moments of all time. This is helped by those old-fashioned Vettel trains with only a seatbelt. The biggest drop is also saved for last. Jackrabbit's 1 minute and 36 seconds cycle is short, but overall is a near-perfect classic coaster that proves that some things never go out of style. Number 3. Thunderbolt. Originally opened as the Pippin in 1924, it was a very similar ride experience to the Jackrabbit we know today. Due to lack of space, Andy Vettel was brought in to expand the Pippin into the Thunderbolt, the king of the coasters. The ride sports awesome NAD trains with a loose lap bar and a recently added seatbelt. Like Jackrabbit, you drop down two dips within a natural ravine before reaching the lift hill, and that second hill gives a great pop of ejector air towards the front. You climb 70 feet in the air on midway level and dive into the spaghetti bowl, an intense double turnaround with two hills and little banking, providing extreme laterals for you and your riding partner. Thunderbolt ends with its two largest drops, the final one being 90 feet where you reach your top speed of 55 miles an hour. 
If you're in the back, you get whipped down almost every hill, providing an old-fashioned, out-of-control experience in a minute and 41 seconds. And night rides on this are legendary. This coaster had high acclaims for many years until more modern wood coasters came around. Now it feels like it falls under a lot of people's radar. Thunderbolt is one of my favorite classic woodies, ranking high among others like Phoenix and Cyclone. Without a doubt, Thunderbolt is the best wooden coaster in the park. Number 2. Steel Curtain Without a doubt, Steel Curtain is currently the most popular and most sought after coaster at Kennywood. It forever changed the skyline of the park with its intimidating superstructure standing 220 feet tall. You start with a slow and loud climb with arguably the best view of any ride in the park. At 75 miles an hour, night inversions come at you fast, including a dizzying 197 foot tall drop and fire dive drop, banana roll, and sea serpent. Following that comes one of my favorite sequences on any coaster. A sustained airtime hill, a perfectly designed dive loop, and a snappy zero-g stall. An intense finale consisting of a corkscrew and cutback complete the 4,000 feet of track. Steel Curtain, for certain, has had its share of problems and downtime, and I do hope the park and SNS can get this up and running consistently. This is many guests' favorite ride. While it's not quite a world-class coaster in my book, it is very close, and definitely one of the better looping coasters that I have been on. Even though it has a light rattle, and the restraints can be restrictive for larger riders, Steel Curtain provides a great mix of airtime, hang time, and positive G's along its two minute ride time. It has been a while since Kennywood has been home to a quality record breaking attraction. Was it worth sacrificing the log jammer? That's for you to decide. Number 1. Phantom's Revenge I hate to say it, but I have become spoiled to have this hypercoaster be at my home park. Compared to similar rides in its class, Phantom's Revenge is honestly one of the best steel coasters in the country. Originally opened as Steel Phantom in 1991, this aerodynamics looping coaster shook the world by storm. Following patterns from the Pippin and Thunderbolt, D.H. Morgan kept the best elements of the Steel Phantom and transformed it into the Phantom's Revenge. You get a great view of the park and surrounding area of the slow 160 foot tall lift before a curving drop to pick up speed. What follows is one of the best drops on any roller coaster. 228 feet down a ravine over and through the Thunderbolt, reaching speeds in excess of 85 miles an hour. What follows is a fast wide turn and a frenzy of ejector airtime hills, leaving you high above your seat. It's a minute and 57 seconds of raw, intense thrill along its 3,200 feet of track. This ride has everything height, speed, intensity, airtime, and hugs the terrain, making it a Kennywood exclusive. The secret recipe behind this ride's greatness, I feel, are its trains. 20 plus years later, Phantom's Revenge still runs smooth, and those side closing lap bars barely touch you, almost acting like buzz bars on a hyper coaster. The Phantom has become synonymous with Kennywood. Everyone is subject to their own opinion, but I feel even with newer coasters coming into the park, Phantom's Revenge is the best roller coaster at Kennywood. And that's my ranking of my favorite roller coasters at Kennywood. I'm sure your list will look different than mine. I would love to hear it down in the comments. Make sure you check out my other video where I rank Kennywood's flat rides. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content. And with that being said, thank you all for riding, and I'll see you next time.